How's it going, everyone? This is Wimbo. Today we are going to have a short Blender tutorials about how to make water droplets using geometry nodes. As you know, it's a 3.0, so everything shifted to a geometry node. It's not just because it's new; uh, it's because a lot of benefit using geometry node. And uh, some of you already know, using geometry node, you can quickly animate the certain element, and also using geometry nodes. The things working on a object, it just works as a modifier. You can even copy this modifier to an existing mesh as quickly you can replicating the effect. Well, there's a, a lot of a benefit using geometry node. Uh, I'm not gonna go over detailed in here. Uh, I'm just gonna show you why or how can we actually do this type of droplet effect on our bottles in your uh, product render. Okay, and the one thing I really want to point it out is that, as you can see here, if I click the 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 droplet, they are the shape that is I created specifically for a beautiful look. It's not a, a realistic for this one because if you pay attention in the real world, uh, is is the droplet is not really like unifying like this shape. These are just like special shape that makes it a little bit pleasing for the eye. And for product photographer, we usually use glycerin mixed with water and spray on these water to the bottle. So they will actually come out. The whole point is that the do you really need to make everything re photorealistic? I think the answer is supposed to be why you making them look photorealistic. That's the question. If you are really rep trying to representing a beautiful bottle and a label or something, the condensation is supposed to be just part of the elements that give you a little bit of sharpness or details for the for the product render. What your focus is supposed to be the beautiful bottle and the and the the logo, uh, how to show off everything or to make everything looks photorealistic, or just just because the sake of a photorealistic, but it doesn't looks nice we're losing the point of, of being photorealistic okay so okay so without talking too much about this I'm going to break it down the scene real quick to you and to show you how to make these so here's our droplet okay so if I'm kind of drag this thing out here as you can see here the droplets is a, if I go to the edit mode it's made us through uh, through the uh, UV sphere and then I just chopped the the other half and make it look a little flatter. And then later on, I just um, select the entire loop by holding Alt and click. When you actually in the vertex select mode, you can select that and hit F to fill that. I just do some couple insert to making sure this is kind of the shape that I want. But one thing I'm important you can see here, I use I just drag in one point, select one point. And then I'm gonna making sure the uh, the proportional editing turned on, so I can hit G to grab it, and I can just making something like in that shape. Okay, it's not really a perfect circle around, so that's kind of the whole purpose of of doing this as a droplet. You can do a couple of different ones; it doesn't really matter. But for me, I think one should be fine because I can just simply changing the the scale for the product. On the droplet, okay. So you can see here, these are the all the droplets on the top of it. So that's the first thing I want to talk about. Second thing, in the past, if you're using particle system, you may sometimes adding a, a random rotations and to trying to getting the direction out. I want to making sure that you guys don't overdo it. Do any no sense random rotations it doesn't really help you because. You think about the gravity is always going to pull the water down, so this shape or this direction should be just fine, okay. And the only thing we need to focus is just the size variation. We will get into the geometry node and to show you how to do that, okay. So that's that's pretty much it. Let's go back to the geometry node tab, and now if I if I'm selecting the body. You can see we have a geometry node in here. So this is the one that you can simply just create your own and uh, to really to to replicate that whenever you have a new project you need to do have similar effect. You don't need wasting too much time on that. And I've seen a lot of 
other tutorials talking about how to use this, but they're doing step by step, which is actually very confusing because without really seeing the big pictures, you wouldn't understand why you're adding these and to keep doing step by step. But I wanted to show you from a quick overview and then to show you why we're doing each note and how, how these things work. Okay, so let's go to the camera view real quick and then kind of zoom in real quick to see the, the droplet. As you can see here, these are kind of like a final uh, look for our bottle for the droplets right here. And you can see here, these are very nice droplets in here. There's a lot of rooms that you can tweak uh, from your taste, but the, for the purpose of this uh, tutorial should be good enough. So what are these? So once you adding a, a geometry uh, node, you immediately having uh, one end, a group input and group output. And there's just a direct line in there. So we just adding all these in. So the reason we have a joint geometry node over here is because we need adding something and to join the bottle. Without having this, if you just only hooking these, let me unhook this real quick and hooking directly here, that the bottle will be disappeared, which means the droplet is supposed to be put on the top of the bottle, but the bottle is disappeared without having this joint geometry so the joint geometry node is going to maintain the bottle okay so we're going to have it that adding all these with this and then you're going to creating the droplets on the actual subject on the bottle itself okay so that's kind of what we're trying to accomplish uh, the purpose of picking a, a very difficult one to light because a lot of times people are using uh, these droplets on a can subject usually the texture is going to be on a mat a lot that's going to look very nice because it's not going to having a double reflections and shadow but i'm picking this just trying to show you uh, the important how to build these and there's some tricks that when you're working with them with the lighting so i will show you okay so first of all so you're going to adding a distribute notes for on the face definitely this has been updated for blender 3.0 and now it's just called called uh, district points on face used to call district points so these are going to be the stable version. I believe right now these terminology is going to stay here for a little bit while. So what we need to do here, we just need to drag here, put a mesh, and go to an instant on point. So basically what this node is talking about, we need to have these droplets are called instants. And we are transforming this bottle into tons of points. So we need to really to have an instance put on these points in order to have in this effect. So we were, what we have here, we are going to have a object info where we can even do a shift A to have a collection, collection info. So that will be something that whenever you have a multiple droplet shapes, then you can put into a collection or folder, then you can hook this one to here. But it works just like the what we used to have, the particle system. You just need a sample which instance or which object that you want to to make them instancing okay to put millions of them that's the whole point so you don't have to do this in this one you can try it yourself using that with a collection okay i can delete that for the random value okay in here you can just put in random value into the scale okay otherwise without putting these all the scales got all look the same on x y z so if you can put in here you can really just changing the the uh, the, the sizes from a uh, very minimum will be 0.2 maximum is going to be four all of these numbers are tweaked specifically for this project for this um bottle so there's tons of time you need adjusting these but you need to understand why you do this uh, one thing I really want to point it out is this the distribute points on face. When you added this new one in, let's do that. To search distribute point on face. Uh, the default is usually just random. Well random doesn't you don't have a lot of control on the random. Uh, you have to using the posing, I think I think posing disk. This I, I did a, a quick Google search. This is still 
is a randomization. It's still random, but you have a little bit more control on the randomizations that you can do. Basically, you can using the distance minimums, you can choose each droplet, how far from each others, and the density, you can choose how dense is this entire bottle for the droplets for the randomness, and also the de uh, density factors, so how much, how dense for each one. And the seeds just kind of playing the random place positions of each one. So it depends on your taste. There's a lot of twists you can do, but basically that's all you need to know. Uh, I'm just gonna delete this one. Just uh, this real points on face and have an instant points and the hook into the specific subject that you want to instance. And then you can hook a random value to the scale or wherever you need it to do. Okay. For this purpose, we only need to have a skill. We need to be randomized for the size. So we have um, variations. Okay. So that's kind of pretty much what we need to, to talk about the, the geometry node. You may be curious what's the texture of these droplets. They may look pretty realistic. Let me go to the shading tab and let's select the, the droplets. Well, surprisingly, the droplets is a very simple one. It's just a glass shader, but I put change IOR to 0.33. And the whole point is of this is it's not really matter for how accurate for this droplet the small details what you want to do if i'm zo really zoom in i want you to really understand what makes droplet looks nice is it is transparent it is a glass but the whatever make it beautiful is you have a short term black some kind of highlight and gray in between that's what actually creating the forms and shapes. So that creating the three dimensional uh, effect. So having these in mind, so you will understand that why we're doing this type of uh, lighting as well. As you can see here, we have a lighting for the background. All the materials very simple. So the background just kind of default uh, principle BSDF. I put the roughness all the way to the one and for the for the floor, always the black acrylic, you know, the black color, specular, all the way to one, zero roughness. Okay, so that's for the floor. For these lights, I have already went over them in uh, several of my tutorials in before. So it's very simple setup. And you can see here, the, the reflecting items we are trying to photograph or trying to render, it's kind of reflecting everything else around it. Whichever is in the transparent right now is actually going to reflecting black on their bottle. Okay, so that's where these blackness coming from. Okay, we from the natural environment in the back because there's no content whatsoever. And we emphasis on the small part or some part of the bottle to making the highlight and transitioning from the, the, the bright part to the dark part, which actually going to forming the three dimensional shape of this product. And same thing for the droplets. That's what make the droplet looks very nice and dynamic. That's because the shape going on. Okay. so. I, th uh, I think that's pretty much all I want to talk about for this short uh, Blender tutorials. And uh, if you really like this uh, video, please hit like and support this channel. And uh, my new Blender 3.0 masterclass is coming out soon within a couple of days. If you're interested to want to learn more, uh, you can see the links down below. And uh, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.